So with that, uh, we can get started. Um, the format of the webinar is, you know, a bunch of slides and in, in between the slides will be two demos by Vandana for Sierra's software tools that help you specifically solve certain design challenges. And at the end of the webinar, it will be a demo on a PCB layout tool. I think it's Altium uh, in regards to some of the things we discussed. So it's a great webinar, ask a bunch of questions. If you don't know about Sierra Circuits or Sierra Connect, Sierra Connect is something we started uh, recently, which is uh, again for designers. Um, it's a moderated forum. Ask your questions there as well. Uh, and you'll get either an answer from another community member or an answer from a Sierra expert. Uh, so it's a moderated um, forum and we respond very quickly on that. Uh, and then Sierra Circuits itself uh, is a PCB manufacturing company and an assembly company. And we also manage components. And then we have our design team as well. And we do everything in the Bay Area today. That's me. So here's the table of contents, um, you know, really going through, um, you know, signal, power, ground traces, and some techniques. So signal power and ground traces all have distinct roles and you need to understand them to plan and execute your layout strategies um, for your high speed and high current applications. And you know, to achieve the, you know, the electrical performance you want, you need to optimize your trace geometries and your, your routing paths. So how do you ensure signal integrity in a high-speed uh, signal path? So first thing is to calculate your critical length. And that's the trace length above which the trace has to be designed as a transmission line uh, with controlled impedance. So the tr signal is transmitted without distortion if the trace length is less than the critical length. And the signal reflection might occur if the signal length exceeds the critical length. That's why it's important to calculate. So you can use these formulas to calculate the critical length of digital and analog uh, signals. So signal delay and impedance mismatching rarely matter if you have short lines. And so in this example, uh, you know, if you have a trace that's less than two inches, that would be considered a short line. And that's not something you have to worry about anymore. So 3 dB bandwidth signifies the frequency range over which the transmission line can effectively transmit signals without loss. So all signal frequency components propagate without distortion when the trace has a sufficient 3 dB bandwidth. If the trace bandwidth isn't maintained, some of the higher frequency components of the signal might get attenuated. And so the 3 dB bandwidth is calculated by, by dividing 0.35 by the signal rise time. And an example is given below. So you can do this or you can use our calculator. So I'm gonna hand it off to Vandana, she can demo the tool that we have. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. So Sierra Circuit's bandwidth rise time and critical length calculator helps the user to calculate the signal wavelength and most importantly, the critical length or the short length of the selected geometry. Uh, you can select the desired geometry from the dropdown over here. Let's go with coated microstrip for now and enter the dielectric constant, for example, 3.6. Uh, now you can enter any one of these four signal characteristics, uh, the maximum data transfer rate, faster signal rise time, maximum frequency content, or the 3 dB bandwidth. Uh, for that, you have to just click on the checkbox here. So let's go with maximum frequency content for now, and then enter a value of 10 gigahertz. Click on calculate. We can see that the wavelength critical length and the maximum short length here is calculated along with the maximum data transfer rate, faster signal rise time, and the 3 dB bandwidth. Uh, if you choose DTR, for example, and I enter a value of maybe 5 uh, GBPS and click on calculate, the calculator 
of course calculates the wavelength critical length and the maximum short length but also calculates the other three parameters here that is the faster signal rise time f max and the bandwidth uh, so transmission lines in any high speed design uh, should be uniform to avoid signal distortions and crosstalk uh, trace parameters like bandwidth rise time and critical length can affect impedance matching which influences the overall performance of the board hence their analysis is one of the key steps in the high speed designs thank you so okay thank you oops can you see my presentation yes okay great so one technique is the serpentine routing and meandering for length matching so serpentine routing and meandering techniques will ensure signals reach their destination simultaneously. And serpentine routing involves guiding a trace in a back and forth snake-like pattern across the PCB. Uh, and this technique increases the physical length of the trace without significantly altering its electrical properties. Meandering creates a series of bends in a transmission line to adjust its electrical length. These bends help fine tune the signal's timing and phase characteristics. To achieve impedance uniformity, consistent spacing between trace segments, preferably three times the trace width is essential. Now, obviously this is not always possible with spacing restrictions. So basically do the best you can, but you wanna do this or try to do this to have consistent propagation characteristics of your signal. So also another technique is guard traces, which create a physical separation between the clock and adjacent signal traces on a PCB. So they protect the signal line from unwanted uh, electromagnetic coupling, ensuring signal integrity and minimizing the risk of crosstalk from neighboring traces. So in this case, guard traces will suppress the radiated electromagnetic magnetic emissions by providing a barrier between the clock circuit and the surrounding traces, reducing the system's potential for EMI. And they're typically connected to the ground plane or dedicated reference voltage. And again, they should be spaced between 3W to 5W from critical signals to maintain optimal effectiveness. And you just have to do the best you can there. And also make sure you follow manufacturing guidelines uh, based on your copper weights and what your manufacturer can, can do. Next, we're gonna to switch topics to uh, trace terminations uh, to prevent signal reflections. So first we have series trace terminations, which involves placing a terminating resistor between the driver and the transmission line. You should place the series resistors close to the driver's side and choose a value so that the combined impedance of the resistor and driver matches the trace impedance. And the termination resistor is placed uh, in a series with each line for differential pairs. So for example, if you have the driver impedance is 23 ohms and the line impedance is 50 ohms, to match these impedances, implement a series resistor of 27 ohms near the driver. The other option is parallel trace impedance. And in parallel trace impedance, a shunt resistor is added in parallel with the receiver. The shunt resistor connected to the power supply is called a pull-up resistor, while the resistor connected to the ground is a pull-down resistor. In differential routing, termination resistors are incorporated in parallel to the lines. We can talk about controlled impedance routing techniques. Um, so again, I just want to encourage if any participants have any questions, you know, please ask, we have, uh, engineers here who can answer them while I'm giving that presentation. So for control impedance, uh, techniques, uh, we have, you want to maintain a uniform trace width along the transmission line and to achieve your consistent characteristic impedance. And so when you're changing your trace dimensions, you wanna taper down the traces gradually to minimize any uh, reflection or degradation and to reduce your chance of impedance mismatches. So opt for thicker traces for lower resistance, uh, improves the trace current carrying capacity as well, and maintain the 3W to 5W spacing 
between traces to minimize crosstalk and ensure uniform impedance. So you have some grounding techniques. So keep the return paths and the loop areas as small as possible. Never split ground planes. When there's a change in the reference plane, include transition vias near the signal vias. Uh, create dedicated reference planes for high speed critical signals. Cover all unused circuit areas with copper pores and connect them to the ground plane. 